I, <laughs> I, um, I would just like um, you two to possibly discuss the difference between the Protestant concept of sanctification and the Orthodox concept of theosis. Okay. Um, because um, <laughs> what I'm picking up, I mean, I, I grew up Protestant, so um, it was a process, and it was sanctification, and you grew into it. It doesn't sound like that's, a comp- that's the same as theosis yeah. at all. Yeah. So right. I would say, you know, um, just to give Father Stephen a moment or two to figure out what he's going to say to his mother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Whew. You know, <laughs> you know, the first time Father Stephen and I were on live radio together, his sister called. Oh, yes, <laughs> so I I'm, know. <laughs> I am feeling a little left out. Where are my Damix at? Hello? <laughs> anyway, I know my dad listens, but he probably would never call. Uh, well, see, I always text. I text Father Stephen after these sessions with questions, and he always says, "Why don't you call in?" There it so. is. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, so here's what I would say. Um, you know, in 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 most Protestant. So, I I grew up Protestant as well. I grew up as an evangelical, and in most Protestant contexts, sanctification is something that kind of happens. So you you you're kind of you've got your salvation. You know, you're you've got your ticket or whatever. Um, and sanctification is kind of the improvement that happens after that, um, and that can be understood as moral improvement, um, you know, uh, especially. Um, but but from from an orthodox point of view, now we wouldn't say that sanct- that we don't believe in sanctification. I mean, that's a word that's in scripture. It just means becoming holy, right? Um, but uh, we would say that uh, that that is salvation. <laughs> Right, that becoming holy is salvation, and if you especially understand that what becoming holy means is becoming one of the holy ones, one of the the hosts of heaven, one of the divine council, then it is a much more active and complex understanding of what it is that we we have been called to do. Right, we're not called to just sort of fix our sin problem and then become better people after that. Again, I know I'm simplifying, but um, what we are called to do is to become like the stars in heaven. We are, you know, that is to say, like the heavenly hosts. We are called to become as one of these, uh, one of the divine council, one of the holy ones of God. Right, and so, so we would say that sanctification is a, a word that describes what that is. You know, it's it's something that we grow into, grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ. Right, um, it's not an instantaneous thing. Uh, it is at the same time something that we we have by means of baptism, but that we also are called to grow more into. Because just because you're baptized does not make you in- instantly, you know, in, in the full sense a member of, of the heavenly hosts. You know, in in every way. Um, you know, so so it's kind of all of that stuff together, and I think the value of what we're discussing this evening is to say, like, look, the destiny of mankind is to stand alongside the angels and to do what they do, you know, and, and so by virtue of being in the presence of God, we become more like him, and we, we become more like him, not just sort of by standing there and absorbing his holiness, but by participating in his works, just as, of course, the opposite happens if you participate in the works of demons, then you become like demons. It's kind of the anti-theosis, you know, demonosis, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, so, so that's what I would say, you know, I wouldn't say there's a difference between theosis and sanctification. I would say that theosis is sanctification, uh, but it's, but that the, but the sanctification in most, not all, but most Protestant models is a much reduced, you know, kind of, kind of image. So I don't know if that makes sense. Father Stephen, what would you say to your mother? Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we read we read Romans eight twenty nine. We didn't read thirty and thirty one, um, where a lot of this, in terms of the, the Protestant view of salvation, uh, comes from. Although sanctification is left out there, but there's there's what's called usually in Protestant theology the ordo salutis, which is the fancy Latin for the order of salvation. So there's an idea that there are these different moments in our salvation that represent a sequence. 
right? And the, the main ones that usually are, there's, there's justification, which is held to be this one-time thing that happens at the beginning when you get saved. And then there's sanctification, which is this process that comes afterwards. And then glorification, which is what happens when you die and go to heaven. Right. right to really simplify things a lot right <laughs> but so there's there's this it's a temporal order it's a series of moments or periods in our salvation but when you read uh, at the end of Romans 8 there's actually nothing in the greek to imply any kind of temporal order or succession that one happens after the other they're all in the same verb tense they're all in the yeah. aorist tense which is just yeah. the simple past tense these things all happened yeah, uh, and even in the English, it just says he also, he also, he also, not he then, right. he and then. Right. <laughs> it's also. And so if you see, if you understand justification is being made righteous, being put right, sanctification is being made holy, glorification is coming to share in the glory of Christ, as we saw St. Paul already talking about. Uh, and we can throw in more, <laughs> right? Um, uh But these are all uh, not sort of a temporal order, but these are all things that happen to us as part of us being conformed uh, to the likeness of Christ, being conformed to his image, as as St. Paul said in in Romans 8, 29, at the beginning of all that, that that's the goal. So these are all aspects of it, but they're like facets of a gem, not these separate independent things or processes. Yeah. so that they're, they're all things that are true of those who, who uh, become sons of God by the grace of God in, in Christ. Yep. So does that answer your question, Mrs. DeYoung? <laughs> yes. I, I mostly asked it for others, you know, who have been brought up with this Protestant concept. Sure. And um, this idea of, process and you know this step and then this step and then this step Um, and I think um, it comes to mind and my my son likes to say well yeah but and tell me a bunch of other stuff but the whole idea of (laughs) you know he does doesn't he (laughs) I am being saved I will be saved all those things are true at the same time that yep. that um, it, but it, yeah, they're true at the same time, rather than being a process, a yeah. one at a time step. Yep. Amen. So, <laughs> thank, thank you, mom. You very, th- Enjoy <laughs> the snow. You. <laughs> You're welcome. 